Two years after my daughter Rachel was murdered at Columbine High School, we found an amazing picture she had drawn on the back of her dresser when she was 13 years old. My daughter Dana remembered being with Rachel when she drew that outline of her hand on the back of her dresser and wrote these words in the center. These hands belong to Rachel Joy Scott and will someday touch millions of people's hearts. Rachel never shared that with anyone while she was alive. Only she and Dana knew that it was written and hidden behind her dresser. She wrote those words with confidence. It was not written as a hope or a wish or a desire, but with certainty. How did she know? Well, she didn't know based on conventional knowledge. There was certainly no proof of that being a reality when she was 13, 14, 15, or 16 years old. How could she know that she was going to die at a young age as a homicide victim? And yet she also wrote that down in her diary just months before the shootings at Columbine. There is a knowledge that's based on learning. It's called empirical knowledge. It's a knowledge that's acquired. That's why we go to school and learn. It primarily operates through the neocortex part of the brain, the frontal lobe. There is also an instinctive knowledge that operates through the primitive or reptilian brain located way in the back of our human skull. Many people sense a snake or bear or other possible threats before they ever see them. Skilled soldiers learn to amplify this part of the brain when they serve in hostile countries. They develop eyes in the back of their head and a sense of a threat before it occurs. But there is a third and much more difficult knowledge to define that I will simply call unacquired knowledge. It doesn't function from learning or acquiring knowledge from any source. It's not an instinct that reacts to present danger. It's much more subtle, but just as certain as acquired knowledge. In my opinion, based on input from neuroscience and philosophers throughout the ages, this knowledge operates through the complex limbic system of our inner brain. Some call it spiritual knowledge. It's a knowing beyond knowing, beyond proof, beyond any acquisition of truth through learning. It simply knows without apology or defense. When I was young and full of self, a wise man said to me, someday your eyes will open, son, someday you'll come to see that down beneath your ego, endless wisdom does abide, and all you ever need to know is hidden deep inside. I thought the man was crazy, and I laughed at what he said. He smiled and gently added, but it's not inside your head. The years have flown and I have grown, my ego left behind. A knowing has awakened from my spirit, not my mind. I'm more than just the thoughts I think. I am, and that is why. In stillness, I have come to know the source is my supply. I understand what that old man once spoke is fully true. From inward flow, I've come to know. I didn't know I knew. That wise old man in my poem was Norman Grubb, a World War I veteran and best-selling author. Norman's wisdom challenged me at an early age to pursue the great philosophers of the ages and the great spiritual teachers who unintentionally would create millions of followers through the centuries. They all understood that there's a knowledge beyond knowing a wisdom of the ages that's hidden deep inside each person's human spirit. Great musicians like Mozart confessed that creativity was not a learned skill, but simply a release of creativity that would flow through them in the form of music, art, etc. Looking back over the last 26 years since Rachel wrote that her hands would touch the hearts of millions of people, we can speak with confidence that what she wrote is true. 28 million people have heard her story in live settings, and hundreds of millions have heard it through books, magazines, television programs, and a major motion picture. You, my friend, also have knowledge and wisdom hidden within you that you don't even know is there. Learn to withdraw from the noise of your thoughts and spend time in the stillness of your own spirit, allowing knowledge, understanding, and wisdom to flow out of you to a world that desperately needs it. You will discover that you know things that you didn't know you knew.